Interestingly enough, just one day after we published our somewhat critical analysis of Philosophy Tube's video on Kant's critique of pure reason, the presenter Abigail Thorne posted a coming out video of herself as being a trans woman and that attracted a lot of views and then we got a lot of views through that as well. The title of her coming out video is Identity, a trans coming out story. So it's about identity and of course also about the identity of, of YouTubers, of people on the social media. That's I think a very important topic and I want to talk about it today as well. And it also is something that was brought up by some of the commenters uh, who commented on our video. For instance, again, I'm quoting here, Mark Young, 01 McComb, wrote there, referring to philosophy tubes, their intention, as you rightly put, is all being done to push forward the host. So thanks for agreeing with us. I still think that observation is correct. But of course it is so basically for everyone who does and posts a, a video on the social media. So it's equally true, at least to an extent, for us right now. Right? So uh, that is something that is again a fundamental condition of producing materials on uh, the social media and putting uh, it there. So this uh, pushing forward the host, I think, has something to do with how identity is now constructed and how we must construct uh, uh, our identity. Uh, somehow now we build identity, let's say, following the model of the influencer. I understand that uh, influencer is now a very popular job that young people want to have when they grow up. And this is very telling because it uh, shows us that this really is something that we like to identify as. We build identity somehow following this model of the uh, influencer. And uh, I want to discuss this today from a philosophical perspective and try to analyze it because I think it hasn't been analyzed properly yet. Please allow me to put this in a larger context. I need to build up a little bit of a conceptual vocabulary to uh, explain this. As I think, uh, and uh, with my uh, friend and colleague Paul D'Ambrosio, we think there are basically three different models, I like to say technologies, of building identity. And they have a historical uh, trajectory. In the past, in traditional societies, identity was typically built through what we call, following Lionel Trilling, we call it this sincerity. Well, what does sincerity mean? Sincerity means to sincerely commit to a specific role that you have in a certain group, typically in the family. But it can be also different groups, like for instance, in the military or in, in a religious group, uh, or in, nowadays like in a sports team or so. And you really build your identity by becoming the role that you have and that you are often considered as being somehow born into, for instance, with gender roles, right? that, you, that you fully identify, fully commit also emotionally that's very important commit to this role and this is why it's called sincerity you become who you are by sincerely committing to the role so we can define this kind of sincerity model of identity or this sincerity technology of building identity in the following way sincerity demands commitment to roles the outside the role is real and the inside your feelings must back it up honestly Otherwise, it's considered a dishonest fake. Now, this traditional model of identity building, which to a certain extent is still, this technology is still used, but its importance has been diminished and other technologies have overtaken it and are now much more advanced. And uh, the first uh, major uh, new technology, I think, was what we call, again, following Lionel Trilling, authenticity. Uh, authenticity means that uh, you discover that, as Trilling also puts it, under these roles there is this kind of true self that I discover uh, or uh, actually create. Uh, so it's often a typical image or metaphor to explain what happens under authenticity is that the social mask is taken away and you, you find your true self underneath this social mask that you were wearing all the time. And so there is also the idea with authenticity that the social roles, this, this commitment is just mere conformity. And now this becomes something bad. You shouldn't be conforming, right? That's why you have to take the mask away. You, you become a non-conformist, right? And this is how you discover or create, which is kind of self-contradictory, your true authentic self. So authenticity implies originality, uniqueness, creativity. 
right? And it leads to what now dominates a lot of the ideology, particularly of the Western world, but, but globally increasingly, this whole ideology of individualism. That really what counts most is the individual along with individual rights, human rights and so forth. So this is all grounded in an identity model that we call authenticity. As a definition, we can say that authenticity demands the pursuit of originality. The inside is real and the outside, your presentation of yourself in society, must be an accurate representation of it. Otherwise, it's considered a hypocritical facade. This notion of authenticity is still very popular, but I think it has now been largely already been replaced by a new form of identity building, a new technology, which is based on profiles. And that's why we, Paul D'Ambrosi and I, call it profilicity, profile-based form of building identity, of creating identity. And this is, of course, most obvious now on the internet, which is what we will get back to on social media, which we will get back to in a minute, and we'll talk about Abigail Thorne and her production of identity. But actually, it's something that probably predates the internet for a long time. For me, I think a decisive way of explaining how profilicity occurred already quite early is the notion of the picturesque and some people are not really familiar with it, so I just explain it very briefly. This was a notion that came up in art and aesthetics in the 18th century. Still today have the notion of picture perfect, right? That's basically a more modern translation of picturesque. That was an aesthetic category. So let's say people were traveling uh, and they were looking at the scenery and then they were saying, wow, this is great. It just looks like a landscape painting. Uh, or people were looking at a person and they were saying, oh, he or she is so beautiful, looks just like this person on a painting. Uh, this expresses uh, the logic of uh, the picturesque and actually the logic of profilicity, that you look at something and you measure it in how it compares to how it has been already observed by others. So you look at the landscape, first order direct observation, and you measure it in your head, uh, you measure its aesthetic quality by comparing it to a landscape painting, which represents how a landscape has been seen and depicted by others. So that's basically a reversal of the traditional logic where uh, you would uh, look at a painting and then of a person, let's say, and then you would say, oh, the painting is great because it exactly looks like the person. So you would measure the painting on the basis of how well it corresponds to the actual person. But then in profilicity, this is being totally reversed. And you measure what you see in first order observation by measuring it to how it has been observed in second order observation. And that is the logic of profilicity. So we have to build up a profile that is an image of ourselves as it is seen by others. And then we build up our identity by seeing how much are we capable of living up to that profile. A definition for profilicity is, profilicity demands the creation of profiles. The outside, the profile is real, and the inside must be truly invested in it. Otherwise it's considered a deceptive fraud. So like its predecessors, authenticity and sincerity, profilicity too demands some form of honesty. It's also somehow real. You must be truly invested into the, in the profile. Profilicity is not more fake than the other models. It's not also worse or inherently more or less corrupted than the other models. It's just a model that we apply in, in modernity and that now, uh, when it comes to social media, uh, has basically become globally valid. It's how we form our identities, everyone. I right now, you uh, by watching it uh, are taking part in this form of profile building exercise. To explain the relation between profilicity and authenticity, which I think is very interesting and which we also need to understand in order to understand Abigail Thorne's video on identity, to understand this better, it's useful to go back briefly to the media theorist Marshall McLuhan, who had a lot of interesting things to say about the media, even though he said these things like 50 years ago or 60 years ago, they're maybe even more relevant today than they were at the time when he said it. The natural uh, tendency is to use uh, a new technology for the old job. And this is particularly true of our own new media, which have come upon us so suddenly, they're all new. It seems to be an attempt to find security by translating anything that is new into something that is familiar. 
And one of the metaphors he uses to explain how modern technologies work, because he wrote a lot about modern technologies, is that it leads to a situation in which we see the world, as he calls it, in the rear view mirror. We see the past in the present. And I think that's exactly the situation we're in right now with regard to authenticity and profilicity. We already live in profilicity, but at the same time, we see ourselves in the rear view mirror as being authentic. So we still use the authenticity vocabulary and the authenticity ideals to describe what we're actually doing, which is profile building. And again, I think the Abigail Thorne video on identity is a perfect example to explain how this works. And that's what we're going to do right now. The climax of Abigail Thorne's coming out video is the second part where she is actually coming out. And you can watch it. It's in minute, minute 26 on the video. She's uh, sitting there beautifully made up in this uh, beautiful old chair, very strongly emphasizing that she is now presenting her real self. She says, I'm no longer performing. I'm no longer pretending. I'm dropping the act. She says, this is not a performance. She says, it's not part of the theater. We can see a clear paradoxical contradiction between the vocabulary she is using to describe her identity and the means by which she expresses her identity. So while the vocabulary still uses, think of the rear view mirror, the authenticity technology, the authenticity vocabulary, the authenticity semantics, the actual uh, way of presenting herself already follows very much the model of profilicity that she is very carefully curating and very professionally and, and very well done this profile of herself that is now presented to a wide, very wide uh, audience. And it is clear that uh, the coming out is a production which is directed to a very wide audience, which is exactly what a profile is. I like to stress very clearly what Abigail Thorne does there is real. It's not fake, but it is real and it is not fake under the conditions of profilicity and not real or fake under the conditions of authenticity. It's impossible for anyone uh, to be authentic on social media. Every social media production like this one right now that you're seeing here is staged, is to an extent scripted, right? It's impossible to be authentic. It functions much more like the landscape painting than the landscape itself. On the social media, Abigail Thorne, myself, and everyone else, you too right now, uh, are part of a process of identity constructions that operates on the basis of profile building and basically already applies the technology of profilicity. Interestingly enough, Abigail also reflects on this, at least expresses it uh, in her video. If you check like at the end of the video around minute 34, uh, she says, quoting her here, by coming out, I have instantly become one of the most recognizable trans women in Britain. So she's very much aware of uh, this process that she's basically directing. Uh, and then she says on her Twitter account, got my new acting profile in order today and my agent started submitting me for female roles. And she says, wow, my coming out video has over a million views in less than 72 hours. So again, this shows two things that this identity building is geared towards takes place in a form of profile building, right? And of course, this identity is confirmed and the validity of this identity is confirmed by the amount of views that the video gets. That's like a super important validation aspect of one's identity, right? So uh, these are already uh, two prime elements of, of profilicity and of identity building under the conditions of profilicity as they become very visible on the social media. Looking a little bit further into it, we can uh, look at a very, I find very interesting and telling pronouncement by Abigail, uh, again at the end of the video, around 33.15, 
She says, my identity is grounded in the things that I love. It's a beautiful sentence and I think the sentence is true. However, what we love, or maybe more precisely what we care for, is different under the conditions of different identity technology. Typically, in sincerity, where our identity is role-based, for instance, in the family, our love and care, and thereby as an expression of our identity, is geared towards our family members. You see this very strongly in the Confucian tradition, but in many, many other traditions as well, where identity is based on sincere role commitment, that your love and care is primarily directed to those immediately present members of the group within which your identity is formed. Now, in authenticity, uh, love and care changes along with the identity model. And now we have like uh, ideas like the soulmate, right? Uh, I love someone not just merely because they happen to be my family member, but because they are also an authentic being that recognizes my own authenticity. That's basically what happens between, or supposed to happen between, uh, the two soulmates, that two authentic individuals recognize one another. This term of recognition coming from Hegel uh, is very central to the notion of identity building in authenticity, that two authentic individuals recognize one another. Uh, and again, then love and care takes place within this context where the identity is established and, and love and care takes place within this. Now in profilicity, what do we do with profiles? We curate them. And curation means to care, care for and uh, to care about. So here uh, we really care about uh, our profile. It becomes super important to us when we put a lot of effort into our profile and we get also very upset if the profile is somehow misunderstood. For instance, uh, this was a reaction to uh, our video. We posted the video just a day, as I said many times, one day before Abigail came out uh, as a woman. Uh, so people were saying we used the wrong pronoun, uh, which we could know at the time. Uh, we made a mistake from their perspective uh, about a uh, very important central aspect of Abigail's profile. So these people do not know Abigail personally, right? They have not a relationship of sincerity or authenticity towards her. It's a profile-based relationship and elements, central elements of the profile now become super important and people really care about this. Right? So uh, there you can see how Abigail is right. My identity is grounded in the things that I love, but what we love changes with different technologies of identity building. So maybe we can say, to make this a little bit more precise, in profilicity, my identity is grounded in the things that I create. So in order to explain profilicity better, I'm going to talk briefly about three core concepts that are important for what profilicity is. The first one is second order observation, which comes, the term comes from the German social theorist Niklas Luhmann. And I already talked about it, basically already explained it when I was talking about the notion of the picturesque. So what counts more is the second order observation and what counts less is the first order observation. Right? Uh, first order observation is what you see directly and second order is observation. You see something as it is observed by someone else. You're observing the observer observing something. And to give you more concrete examples, this is how we operate, particularly in the social media nowadays, constantly. Right? Uh, for instance, when you watch a video on YouTube, you watch it also in light of the comments on that video. So we always see something already in terms of how it is being seen. Or think about if you go to a restaurant, uh, right? Or if you travel for, you know, a, a, a holiday or something like this, right? You look at the reviews. Uh, you look at the restaurant, you judge it in terms of the reviews. When, you, when you're choosing a place, uh, you first look at how is it being seen by others who went there. A video, a, a movie, right? And you check, uh, you know, the ratings on, on Rotten Tomatoes. So we live in a world of ranking and ratings, and ranking and ratings are uh, the second order observation that guide us, that by which we orient ourselves uh, in the world that we live in. We orient ourselves on the basis of second order observation and judge what we see in terms of 
the second order observations. And most importantly, of course, if we look at the world like this, we also look at ourselves uh, in these terms and we produce ourselves with regard to second order observation. That's what a profile is. It's an identity that is created with second order observation in view because it becomes, so to speak, our second nature to look at everything, including our own identity in terms of second order observation. So this is a very important concept in order to understand profilicity and what happens to identity under conditions of profilicity. And then the second important concept is the concept of the general peer. Now traditionally in sincerity and in authenticity, and as I said earlier, we still use authenticity and sincerity from time to time today. They have not totally disappeared, but profilicity as a technology is the more advanced technology. Just like we use digital technology most of the time, but sometimes we still use mechanics, for instance, when pushing a button or opening a door, right? It hasn't fully disappeared, but the profilicity technology has become or is the most advanced technology. So what is the general peer? Well, in, in sincerity and in authenticity, uh, we orient ourselves towards peers who are present, right? Again, like example of the family, our family members whom we spend most of our time. Or again, like in authenticity, the soulmate, who we want to be present. But under conditions of profilicity, this changes. The present peers are no longer the most important, right? What your friend, if your friend writes a review, that doesn't really count as much as the reviews of the people you don't know. And if you have like uh, Abigail Thorne had like millions of views, it's impossible to know all these people personally. And you neither have the time nor the need nor the desire to meet these people. Uh, it would be impossible. And yet this is what is really important, that you somehow connect with a general peer, those who are not present. And most interestingly about the general General peer. The general peer is not anyone in particular. It's not any specific person. Like when we are looking, for instance, also because we are, as I said many times, operating right now under the same conditions. This is also right now happening under conditions of profilicity. Last night we were looking at the viewer statistics. So we're not really interested in any individual viewer. We're interested in the general viewer, the general peer. We need an abstract metrical uh, understanding of who is the general peer and how does the general peer react to us. So this is why we now have all these data and so forth. Then it's not about identifying personally, individually, any single person. We are interested in the general formation of this peer. So it's not something whom we can ever meet in person. It's impossible to meet the general peer. As an individual, the general peer doesn't exist. And yet, this is the most important peer that we need to relate to. So this is a very interesting phenomenon that the most important, let's say, validator, validating agent for our identity is not any particular person, but is, is a rather abstract, metrically accessible general peer impersonal peer. That's also an important thing to understand about the formation of identity under conditions of profilicity. A third concept is the concept of the social validation feedback loop. This concept, at least as far as I know, was coined by Sean Parker, who uh, used to be like co-founder of Facebook. And he had a video, kind of very revealing video, where he said, well, we in Facebook, this was right from the start. This was our intention to uh, make you stay as long as possible on this platform. This was all we wanted, right? To somehow create a platform that will really make people addicted. And how do you do this? Well, by creating social validation feedback loop. Because now what counts is what we care, what counts is what we care for, what we love, what counts is how we build an identity. And this now happens through social validation feedback loops, for instance, on the social media, like also like Fai and I producing this video, we constantly look at the feedback we get. This is the video right here is a product of the feedback we received and then giving again feedback to that feedback. So this is basically what keeps us addicted, right? That we always want to remain in touch, no longer with our family members, no longer with our soulmate, but with a general peer. But the general peer is not just an abstract thing, which it also is outside. It is also something with which we are bonding through these social validation feedback loops. So that is the way how we bond nowadays. That's an extraordinary change to these uh, previous models of, of identity formation. One final thing, of course, 
there are a lot of problems attached to profilicity. As I just explained, it causes a lot of stress, for instance. But make no mistake, the other identity models are also very stressful. Family life can be extremely stressful. Always to be original, unique, creative can also be extremely stressful and to be different from everyone else, right? This pressure to be different from everyone else can also be very stressful. So none of these identity technologies is perfect. None of them is better than the others. None of them gets identity right. And all of them cause a lot of stress. All of them cause a lot of problems. And so this is, I think, again, something that once we understand how it works, uh, which we are trying to do, uh, we can reflect on how to live with it, how to cope with it. That's an important question that, that we need to address as philosophers, I think. And I personally try to address it by uh, using sources from the Taoist tradition. And we'll talk about this as well uh, in, in another video, maybe.